Okay. So we are just finishing getting set up here. Sorry, I'm running a little bit late. I woke up, I had a hell of a headache around 8.30. Tried to take something, hoping it would sort itself by the time the next time I woke up. Passed the fuck out. <laughs> woke up. And then my allergies started flipping their shit. Like, hardcore. And I've been trying to get that to settle because my eye... My one eye was watering and... Itching and burning and I'm like, stop it! Can we not? Must we do this right now? And so I was having a hell of a time getting set up with that um, happening. So here we are. Sorry, I'm a little late. It happens sometimes. So it's art day. It's painting with wool day. We are still following along with our needle felting with Bob Ross series. We are working on, hang on, let me figure out where these keys are. There we go. Um, where's my row? Where am I? It's here. So, um, we are up to episode six currently. I did not realize this was going to take me so long to get through all of these episodes, but we've started picking up a little bit of steam since, uh, we're doing it two days a week now instead of one. So that's helpful. And, uh, we are on, I don't know what session number we are, are on nine, maybe. We're definitely going to go past 13 because I've been having to do uh, shorter sessions, so at least I think we will. Kind of depends, but uh, with the way things have been shaping up. And I'm okay with that. It's just, it's the way it is. It's what we have time to work on. It's what we have time to do. And if that's how long it takes, that's how long it takes. So in the chat there is the link to the original tutorial in full. Because um, I know that we leave ours on pause for quite a lot of time. Because that's how long it takes us to get through it. And I usually have it muted. now we are just finishing up putting in our flat base grassy section. This section's a little bit more difficult than I was expecting it to be because there's so much, so much yellow and shades of yellow and Sitting here, there's some greens in there and stuff, but you kind of took that yellow ochre cad yellow mixture and just went. Oh, there's a little bit of sap green in there too, I think, and just went ham and just started smooshing that brush everywhere. And I'm just kind of like, whoa there, buddy. That's, uh, that's a lot of similar shading going on in there. And then trying to put in bushes and shrubs around it, man. That is the difficult part. 
He's making a dark color on there right now, and I'm a little nervous as to why. Because he's got the brush out. Now that's going to be in the next part after we get done doing our shrubbery. But I'm kind of like, did I miss something here? Um, you know. What's up? What did I miss? I really don't know. I don't know if I should be concerned. We might hit play here in a second and advance that forward just a skosh to see. careful just to see what um, that's why we wear finger protectors and why you should too because accidents happen sometimes my brain gets going so fast I'm not paying attention to where my fingers are and my fingers are like oh wait we want to do this now and they can't get out of their own way actually doing pretty good with that at the moment. We'll see if that continues. So, um, I am using acrylic yarn. You can use roving. Nothing wrong with using roving. Um, I just can't afford <laughs> the amount of roving in the colors that I would want. I mean, I could probably try to dye the roving, but... That sounds a little more ambitious than I want to get involved with. Sirens, sorry. We live on a busy street for those that are new here. And the soundproofing in this house is shit. So, we're maybe 20 feet from the road. Well, 30 at the most. get a little loud sometimes. <clears throat> Excuse me, depending on what's happening outside. I actually thought about canceling today, but since we're not going to be able to go next week, I didn't want to do that. Next Sunday there will be no stream, sorry. It happens from time to time where we have to cancel a Sunday. At least this time I'm able to let you guys know in advance what's going on. section though is just being a little bit stubborn about filling in and I don't know if I should just accept it or if I should keep trying to fill it in. Cause 
It's just a little bit darker than I necessarily want it to be. But sometimes what you want and what the fiber wants are two totally different matters. And sometimes what the fiber wants to do can temporarily win. Temporarily. I'm not quite sure about all of this because now this is kind of pulling into question my placement of like my trees and stuff in the back. down the back sections here. Not for any particular reason, just because I think I find that um, it helps this be a little bit more flatter out here. You need to go there. Okay. So. I am going to hit play on this just for a minute, because I'm not sure what's with this dark color. Oh. That's what that was about. Okay, yeah, that section of dark that we've got coming in here. Okay. We're not quite there yet, Bob, so... At least now I know what that color was about. So he's got kind of like all these like bushy things happening here. Um, what was the other mustard I didn't end up doing? A lot with. Alright, so we're gonna come in. We're kinda kinda. if we can figure this out a bit here um, all right. just get some little shrubby guys forgot to little snippy doos out. Alright, let's see what we can what we can do here. No promises, but we will see. The top of him is going to kind of blend on up into the bushes there. I guess that's alright. Um, kind of got some other guys here that we can fuss about with too. Let's 
So we're going to bring that over a little bit more. Just trying to get this guy in to here. to do is over the edge of our pathway but wow that is bright on there isn't it it's like a bright lemony yellow Another little, this guy comes a little bit further out. I'm just gently scraping my uh, needle wasn't actually stabbing there for a second. You don't want to stab and then pull because you're going to snap. And that's not going to make anybody happy. There's a loose little tail there, so I'm just going to kind of spaghetti twirl it around the needle. And kind of stab that guy through in there. So we do have our bridge that's going to like line up in here, so some of this might not even really be all that visible by the time we uh, get to the bridge, but you know, let's uh, see what we can do with it here. Maybe some of it will be. You'll never know. Alright, we should probably like bring this out just a little bit further. in the fiber there a little bit to kind of get it to do what I want to do hopefully or at least kind of get it into some sort of shape there that we can work with I really should be using this finger but sometimes it's hard to tell if I actually have a hold of it Sometimes I'll use one of the protected fingers to shield one of the non-protected fingers. Alright, so we get this guy put into here. And when I first looked at this guy, he didn't seem all that bad. Like. He seemed pretty straightforward, but then, when we actually get in here and start trying to uh, put this guy together, I'll tell you, he's 
suddenly seems to get a lot more complex to me. Sorry, my hands like to bend at these weird angles. I don't know why, I just go with it. That's fine. That's what the hands want to do, and that's what the hands are going to do anyway, so... That we've just kind of learned to roll with. So I almost kind of want to taper this off a little bit. To the edge here. To see. That'll make it look like a little less... Why are you here? If we kind of flatten it out into everything else. Did you throw away those bad eggs? Oh yeah. Okay, just so I know they're not... Yep. Okay. So I know what I'm grabbing later. Um, probably, I don't know, maybe one more. I'm gonna bring you out a little bit further into the pathway, though. And then we'll come back in and we'll do the other side. This is really tough to try to match what he does with this particular medium because he's got all of these shades happening. That you can just make happen. Not even that you're really making them happen, they just do with the paint, with all the different colors, with what's already down, because you know, he's got that, that real, um, medium heavy liquid white down, that is just basically like a tinted, uh, medium, and then He's got all the colors mixing on their brush, doing their own thing. And then you've got, you know, everybody mixing together on the canvas, getting in into even more different shades. And the liquid white lightening up everything on top of it. So you never really know what color he's gonna get when he's done up there. So all we can do is try to find a shade of yarn and be like, maybe this kind of situation. Kind of, sort of. I mean, we'll start to look like we're getting some blended, shaded stuff the more thinner layers that we get on top of each other in here, but still, it's nothing like what he's gonna do. At least not at my skill level, I'll put it that way. 
Maybe somebody can. I can't. But we're doing the best we can. And that's all we can do. We're giving it a valiant effort. Alright, so we need a bit more. This is um, the paint box Simply Chunky that we're working with at the moment. And this shade is Buttercup. And again, I know it takes a little bit longer to do it this way, but I am going with the less is more approach to start out with. Just because I find it's a little bit easier. to work with. Because we can always add more. Reducing it's another matter entirely. Um, we would probably have to go over it with the other colors and try to pretend that section didn't happen because I've heard some people say you can take a seam ripper. I've not tried that. Um, I think that might only work in specific situations. Where maybe you haven't gotten that much laid in yet or you haven't gotten it quite that ooh, easy there. Attached yet. Um, I don't really see how that's gonna work, so um, I think you just end up accidentally grabbing the other shades below it and just, you know, making a whole huge mess at that point. Just working on getting some more taller shrubbies in here. And he's just got them heavy in this cad yellow light greenish yellow ochre mixture, whatever the hell he's got going on here. Um, and I think it's because it's supposed to imply that there's bright sun in this area, since he focuses on making sure that this section is really dark, because one of Bob's favorite bits of wisdom to depart upon everyone is that you can't show darkness without light and you can't show light without dark. So I think a lot of people seem to think, oh, well, that's just on, you know, shading rules or whatever. But I think it's also to convey, you know, you can't get the point across that this is a lighter section of the painting unless you have a darker section to play off of it as well. Alright, so this is lime. We're using mostly the paint box, simply chunky at the moment. Um, we do have some of the Joanne Fabrics Big Twist value line in this piece. And I do have some of that hanging up next to me, but I'm not using any at this very moment. And uh, this doesn't come this way. I had to do this. These are my Ziploc bags. It's just the skeins of yarn. You pick them up. You cut them to lengths that you can manage. And uh, then you fluff them out with a uh, dog grooming brush. 
it's the big scare well it's the scary ones that have the metal teeth that hurt when you touch them pretty much a sticker brush you know it's for like the dogs that have the undercoat that you have to get on out of there is basically what that's about and it helps to the metal teeth get into the twisties of the yarn and um, untwist them. You might be able to use cards, uh, hand cards. I've not tried the hand cards. I would like to. It might be easier on my fingers, but I don't own a pair right now. But I think that might work too. Because you're basically just brushing out the twisted uh, yarn, putting it back to its pre-twisted state, basically. And this just works a bit better for my budget. Let's see, I think we need another shrubby do in here. I'm not gonna go too crazy filling in a whole lot of shrubbery. Like he's just got like shrubbery everywhere. I don't really want to go quite that crazy in here. We'll do a little bit for sure. It might take a couple passes with adding some fluff here. So I don't want it too solid on itself. Like not like the the sky where we've got it like super solid in there. Just I want some of these other colors in some areas to kind of pop up through. So on these shrubs, since there's a hint of green in there, and what he put down, because the base of that I think was sap green, maybe the tiniest bit of cad yellow, and um, then that liquid white stuff that was already down there. There is the slightest feel of a green tinge to that yellow. doing that many but this guy I might make a little bit more robust here. You can hear the crunch of all the fiber layers because we've got that green, the dark dark green in there. And we've got our golden yellow ochre-ish color in there. We've got a little bit of that mustard yellow from up here kind of layered in a little. So I'm using like the, the felt felting mat or the wool felting mat, whichever they call it. It used to lay flat. It did but we've definitely put it through its paces with everything that we've made so it's kind of lopsided and domed now and that's okay I mean it's gonna happen but I feel like its longevity is a bit better than maybe using foam 
Maybe, I don't know. My ears can't take the scratchiness of doing foam. So. It would be a lot scratchier than uh, than this mat for sure. We got a little taste of it when we were working on that gingerbread house over uh, late fall. When we were working on the base and on the Christmas trees. I don't think I did much of the base work with you guys, that might have been the Christmas tree that you all got to hear the scratchiness of because I didn't want to put you through that. Right, I think we need to add a few more tiny flares to this guy. Because he actually looks pretty round and I didn't necessarily need for that to happen. That just kind of did. Okay, so it is Sunday. How's everybody's weekend going? It's not quite over yet. If you're part of the traditional weekend. But how'd it go? What did you do? What were you up to? of anything hiding from the heat for the most part it did pain us having to put the air conditioning on but it would have been a bit too insufferable in the house it was already getting to that point having to battle headache or migraine on top of it being hot is horrible. And then it's just one other thing kind of poking at you. Alright. I'm just gonna kind of Try to put a little bit of this in underneath of him. So it doesn't look quite so out of place, but I didn't quite make that 
as thick as probably I should have. I'm going to come back in and add a little bit more. Just to kind of help set him down just a little bit. And it kind of looks like he's coming out of a lighter blotch of grass, then even better. And just kind of try to smooth you down a little bit. Now see, as we've been going, this section's calmed down quite a bit. With its fluffy lengthwise, and that could also be because we're, we're you know, pulling fibers this way, and it might be pulling everything a little bit tighter together. Or it could just be from use, it's kind of all the back and forth, back and forth, it's just settling into how it wants to be. Alright, um, so I don't want to get too carried away in here, maybe we'll do another splotchy of our yellow in here. Did he not pee? Or was he mad because he wanted to be outside? I don't, I don't know what his deal is because I keep taking him out and he'll bug me an hour later. No. You nope. might just want to be outside. Well, too bad. It's too hot out. Go. So I was asking if he had actually peed. Or he's hungry. And he just smelled the food bowl. There's food in the food bowl. might be thinking that Russell has something up there to share. And he doesn't. They'd rather eat what we have than their own food. He will eat his dog food eventually. And uh, I do mix a little bit if I have something to give them in with their dog food. for their dinner. Not sure why you're all out here willy-nilly on your own. See, I know Bob went pretty hardcore on the big shrubberies and everything all up in here, but I don't, I don't really want that. I don't know, I think it's going to be too busy. It's already kind of busy, but we are going to um, attempt to push that back into the background here soon. I kind of thought we were doing the bridge before we did the dark section, but apparently not. Alright, I'm going to grab a little bit more of our lime green. It's a slightly lighter shade than the Big Twist Value Light Green. Well, they are two different companies. So, fair. 
but I feel like that would be okay to do that here. section of green coming up here. <laughs> what did you make to eat? Husband. Huh? What did you make to eat? Oh, I just made a spam sandwich. Oh. We're gonna have homemade chicken nuggets tonight. I don't know if they're really chicken nuggets. Hello, honey. How are you? Got some panko breadcrumbs. We'll season those up. And we'll roll some chunks of chicken breast around in that and uh, I'll throw those in the oven. I'll probably hold out a couple of pieces of chicken unbreaded for the dogs and throw in their dog foodie cups And maybe we'll have some mashed potatoes with it because I'm feeling like going simple. And I know rice is simple, but it's kind of not. It is, but it isn't. I'm just not in the mood for rice right now. I hope all is well with you, honey. Hope your weekend's doing all right. If if it's really you know your actually non-work weekend. I mean, my weekend for the longest time was midweek, so. It seemed to be that way no matter where we were working. Except for the brief time I was merchandising at the craft store. Then I was 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, except the occasional special Sunday sale that I had to come in and work, which sucked because those special Sunday sales were 6 p.m. To 9 p.m. I would have just rather worked the whole day Sunday than, you know, had to dick around all day, waiting till like 5, 5.30 to start to get ready for work and make my way there. Probably around 5 I'd start getting ready and then leave because it's like then I'm spending my whole day waiting because I feel like I can't get involved in anything because then I'm going to lose track of the time. I mean, I didn't have to work the sale, 
it was volunteer but that volunteer was always in quotation so it was kind of mandatory but it was an unspoken mandatory so if something happened or you had previous plans and you could not make it there management would be mad at you until they forgot why they were mad at you <laughs> especially if you're one of the ones that usually always works it and they're like yeah we'll see you Sunday he's like no I told you I'm that's not happening this weekend I'm unavailable. <laughs> what is that? Oh, it's a wraith. Oh, Moobot made a noise too. That scared me. Hello, crafty artist. Wow, crafty artist and friends. Hello. How is everyone today? Welcome, welcome. Sorry to raid and run, but you need to go to the store for closest. Hey, no problem. I've been there. Trust me. No problem at all. Uh, thanks for the raid. Appreciate it. Welcome, welcome. I am Nisi. Crafty artist friends. And uh, a couple days a week we do art. The rest of the week we do some gamey things just to, for something different and uh, today we are needle felting where we take fluffy fibers I'm using acrylic yarn at the moment I will use a little bit of roving if I have the right shade but I mostly use acrylic yarn and uh, right now we're working on a series where we our needle felting along with Bob Ross's tutorials. Instead of doing paint, I have done following along with the oil paint in him before. But this is a lot less messier and cleanup's a lot easier. And then I don't have to worry about stinking up the whole house with the oil paint smell. Which I kind of got away from using them when my dad started getting a little bit sicker because of the smell. I didn't want to make his COPD worse. And then I just never picked them back up. Yeah, we're, we're a quietly lurky channel, then that's just fine. No worries at all. And uh, it's kind of fun to see what we can do. We've done, we're working on season three of The Joy of Painting. We've done the first five of this season so far. Um, those are archived on the YouTube channel, Nisi BGM. Same name is here under the Nisi Needle Felts playlist. Also, a quick video at the beginning of that playlist with how I prep my yarn at the moment. So this is his episode 6 covered bridge and that's what we're attempting to work on. I know mine doesn't look exactly like his. That was our concept sketch in the upper left hand corner. Sorry, sometimes I get my left and right confused. I had to stop and think about it. Um, amazing but when you actually have to stop and think about the one that you're saying then usually at least my brain gets it wrong and I'm like no why did you say that you meant the other one I do it to Russell all the time when I'm reading the GPS he's he's like okay my right or your right and he's like my side of the car or your side of the car I'm like um your side of the car <laughs> is the direction that we need to turn. Alright. And when I get done the projects, because, you know, 
It takes us a few live stream sessions to get through each one. Um, I will take all of those live stream sessions for that one project and edit them down into one video so that way um, people that want to see a finished product can watch it in one one thing and I will like super speed it up so not quite a time lapse but more like a speed felt instead of a speed paint and I'm still working on editing the last one that we did I am learning new editing software so it's taken me a little bit longer plus we had the PC die in the middle of everything happening and I was glad I wasn't in the middle of editing that video I was kind of I knew we were gonna have to replace it soon so I was waiting until we got the replacement in which worked out in our favor it's just the replacement happened a lot more suddenly than I was expecting it to but uh, yeah we're working on that so uh, stream schedule tentatively around here um, is Sunday and Monday we do arty things in the afternoon usually because that's what my schedule allows for at the moment because um, a lot of the times the husband and one of his friends oh thank you for the follow appreciate that sometimes the husband and one of his friends um, like to do stuff in the evening so I try to do stuff at night wow Mubot's being all kinds of chatty with me today I don't know if that Moobot sound came through, but that was what the weird little video game noise was. It doesn't always make the noise, so I'm like, why am I hearing double noises? Um, I think I had that before we put the flamingo sounds in. I think that one needs to come out into the pathway a little bit more, I think. So, um, yeah, so Sunday and Monday are art. Sorry, I tend to squirrel a lot and lose my train of thought. It happens. Um, Tuesday and Wednesday, I don't have anything scheduled. Tuesday used to be a day that husband played D&D &D with his group. Um, that has since ended. So everybody's schedules were just taken a shit fit and they were canceling more than they were playing so we decided to put a pin in that for the time being plus with time zones it was making it really hard to nail down everybody because at least one person was from England so that was making things a bit tricky so um, Tuesday Wednesday we don't have anything specifically scheduled I might sneak in a bonus stream on Wednesdays once in a while, but it is bonus content. Uh, it could be a game. It's usually a game of some of some sort if I wanted to check something out or wanted to get in a little something extra. Sometimes we'll stick it in there. Thursday, right now, we're working on Coral Island, uh, one of the newer farming sims that came out in October, I think. Um, yeah, that's still in early access. We've been working our way through that ever so slowly, just seeing what all there is to it. That's a cute game. Friday we do Planet Zoo. Um, Friday we do a, um, I'm working on a solo Planet Zoo park. Um, where I have a spinning building wheel of doom where I've thrown on a couple of building options to choose from and uh, we spin the wheel, we see what we get and then we spend however long it takes putting that in and then when that's done we spin the wheel and start again um, I want this to come out into the pathway a bit more. 
So this guy kind of taking over this section of the pathway. A little bit. That's a little better. And then Saturday, we're also working on a Planet Zoo Park, but it's a challenge zoo that um, I'm facing off against the husband with. He's been streaming his park build on his channel. Uh, that's Mr. Nisi in the chat. And um, we have a specific, a specific set of parameters we have to follow to build against each other. Um, same map, we're just not swapping the map back and forth like we had done previously because that was making our computers scream in agony. Um, which is why we had to end the first park we were working on against each other a little bit early. And um, right now in that park, we are working on putting in 13 grassland species. But we've got quite a ways to go on that. I think I've only gotten four in so far. Because I'm a slow, slower builder than he is, but I do some recorded sessions and then put a video up of speed build trying to catch up to him. Um, he's just been picking whatever animal to go with. Um, in that one, I've been using a random animal generator for what we're doing. Alright, so we're just working on getting these shrubs and stuff in here on both sides of our pathway. Then we have to work on our dark section here. We'll, we'll get to the bridge eventually, I promise. I'm not stalling it, just this isn't a quick medium to work with. So if you're looking for like an instant gratification, I'm done, like within an hour or something, then you're probably going to want to go with paint. Maybe scrapbooking. Oh, that would be interesting. Doing it with scrapbook paper, like the cardstocks. I'm not gonna. I've got enough projects that I want to work on that are half started. If I still had my scrapbook paper though, it might be easier to do with like those Cricut machines where you can cut out um, each layer and like do those like 3D layered looking things. Somebody should work on that. I've not seen anybody do it that way. I've seen all kinds of stuff on YouTube with people following Bob Ross tutorials. We've done at least one in uh, tissue paper. I don't have a photo of that one handy and the finished piece is in the other room. But there is a photo of it on my Kofi page. Possibly the Insta page too. Again, right there, I was just scraping the surface. I wasn't stabbing in and then pulling. That will snap your needle in a heartbeat. If you're gonna try to scrape the fiber over to where you want it to be, you wanna gently scrape the very surface without stabbing the needle fully in. These needles are very sharp if you've never done this before is not for unsupervised small children. These needles mean business. They can go through your fingers. I guess even sewing needles can if you try hard enough, but these are very sharp. Especially when you're putting force behind it, stabbing through all of the layers of fiber. 
That's why we have these things on. They're like a fake leathery protector usually you can just glance right off of it um, if you hit it just right you can go through these though so they're kind of just there to keep it from going fully through your finger um, highly recommend that you wear them even if you think that you're a badass and doesn't uh, does not need them I'm badass. I don't need these. There we go. Couldn't find the right verbiage there. Um, don't don't play chicken with. Don't play chicken. Don't play chance with the uh, needle felting needle. Um, probably won't end well for you if you do. Um, we've made a few figurines, which is like the general. General. Um the more done type of artwork with the needle felting the more popular one I guess there's a couple photos on there of some of the stuff we made we made um it's pretty beat up he's a little dust bunny covered but we've got mm, Marvin he was one of our first a little dusty from hanging out on the desk. He's one of our first um, figures we made. Don't ignore the string wrapped around him. Um, we were working on Christmas ornaments and I needed a floss card and I didn't have a floss card and I didn't have any cardboard to make one real quick. So I was like, hey, Marvin, you'll work. So he's our desk lawn flamingo. Kind of just hangs out over there. And I made my mom a chicken that's sitting on a nest. And for Christmas she got a half-assed, really deformed <laughs> rooster ornament. Uh, that picture should be on Kofi. I don't think I put it on Instagram, but I may have. And then I tried to make my dad a little hydroplane boat ornament that had a lot of views for some reason, and I think that's because people thought I was potentially making something that I wasn't, or they weren't sure what I was making because of the shape of it. But it was supposed to be a little hydroplane racing boat, because um, he used to race them. Not professionally, but in like the amateur local leagues. Although I think at one point he was traveling a couple states away, so not that terribly local, but eh, you get the idea. So I keep forgetting that I don't have to go to the edge of my mat. We are allowed to pick it up and move it, but I guess because I'm like, oh, straight edge, straight edge, I'm trying to line this all up. Um, some people go smaller with this medium, because it is a little bit more time consuming. Which is fair. It's fair, because, you know, it takes time to do this, and a lot of dedication, and it becomes a little bit of a labor of love. Um, this is, it's hard to tell, this is a 9 by 12 piece of felt, this gray piece. And then this inner square is approximately 8 by 10. I'd been trying to get it measured out so that it would fit in like an 8 by 10 frame. Or fit in an 8 by 10 mat, kind of. Um, I'm actually doing really well on this one where the edges are pretty straight. It doesn't always work out that way. Sometimes the edges are a little wonky and wobbly. And so I think I've figured out a way to display it where that's not quite a problem per se. But yeah. And last night we did a bonus stream because I really didn't want to video edit anymore. I was tired of video editing. My hand was like, enough of this repetitive video editing 
the motion. So we decided to do a little bit of dinkum. Made a mess of the area trying to work on my house a little bit. So we didn't get a whole lot accomplished, but started to, I mean, you gotta take time to work on the house area, right? So might as well. Adding a little bit of this lime green in with our bush here. I'm kind of amazed that these guys keep coming out in like an almost circular feel to them because I didn't put it down in a circular shape. I didn't. Just kind of worked out that way. I don't want this to be super filled in like Bob's is because we went to all that work putting in our grassy things. trying to escape its containers here. That's no good. Okay, but Mr. Shrubbery, I really want you to like branch out in, in this direction a bit. If you could be grand. So if you're just kind of sitting there looking like a lopsided circle. Alright, so I've been going with the little bit, you know, less is more mentality on this because we can build it up easier than we can potentially take it away. You okay? Mm -hmm. okay. You sure? Yeah, I'm alright. Right. Even that looked a little... On the right side, we might just leave looking like that. I don't want them to be too too much. But all right, so let's grab some of our buttercup here. Come here, bits of fluff. Okay, so I'm going to try to make the shape that I want. We'll see if we can translate that down on in here. Don't know if that's going to... Bless you, kitty. Don't know if that's going to quite work. So we've got a few cats scattered about the house and two doggos. We used to have guinea pigs. For a while. So, oh, and we have the fish. So if you hear like a weird water blubbing noise water bubbling noise in the background. I'm not sure how much it's coming through because we've got a 
larger fan running in the doorway to our room. Trying to keep the air conditioning circulating. So one house or one room in the house doesn't get particularly colder than the rest of it. Um, so we have I have a little three gallon tank on my desk that's currently housing my beta. So I have a mustard beta that was named Valentino. Or if you're feeling the tri-state, New Jersey, Philly, New York combination of states, Vinny Tufins. So, you know, just depends on your mood and uh, what kind of attitude you're feeling for the day or the moment. He's still alive and kicking. Oh, and we have hermit crabs. They're really the husbands, so I'm scared of them. I'm more afraid they're gonna pinch me than anything. We had one of those on stream at one point. We're still thinking about trying to do hermit crab cam. But, um,. We need a larger herd of hermit crabs to try to have more out and about at any given time. Because they're real good at hiding depending on the time of the day. Keeping in front of our house. They've been doing it a lot today. And I think my mom's taking a nap, so it's not like it's just random people beeping seeing somebody sitting out on their front porch, which I also don't quite understand. But, unless they thought it was somebody else. It doesn't seem to be happening enough for it to be like a loose animal that we need to go investigate. Our guys are indoor animals, all of them. A little too dangerous around here to uh, let anybody be free roaming between the drivers not paying attention. Some people adamantly hating cats and have stated on Facebook in one of the group chats for the town, or one of the group pages somebody made for the town, that they will shoot a cat if they see it on their property. Um, don't know if they were just being a big talker or if they'd actually do it, but some of the people in this town, I wouldn't put it past them to actually do it. Um... And the wildlife around here, I just, it's not worth it. It's just not. I think they did pass that, um, that animal cruelty law, or animal, yeah, I guess that would be animal cruelty, um, where it's a felony now if you were to do something like that. But, given the area that we are, they might still get away with it, I'm not sure. I'm like, really? You can't just shoo them out of your yard? 
We gotta go to that extreme. Really? Okay. We have one outdoor stray that kind of hangs out around our house. And we're okay. We'll feed them. Like, we don't care that much. I mean, we'll cut them off after a certain point. We're like, no, no, you're eating me out of house and home. No more for the rest of the day. But, uh, he's an okay cat. It's not completely feral. He lets us pet him. Sometimes he hops in our laps. Sometimes he just hangs out for a while. And then he leaves to go back doing his cat things. He likes to antagonize the indoor cats, though. Um, the one indoor cat can't stand the fact that he's out on our porch sometimes. And, um, he used to scratch at our glass front door when the outside cat was on the porch. The inside cat would. One of them. And, you know, at first we thought, oh, that's cute. He's trying to tell us so-and-so is here. Except I don't think that was the case now. I think he was actually trying to get to him. To tell him to get the heck off of his porch. Because it's escalated now when the other one is outside. The freeloading stepchild. As we like to call him. Um, he will show up and just sit there on the porch in front of the door. And the other one has now, or in front of the window, the one that doesn't seem to like him is taken to slamming his head or his full body. I haven't caught him actually doing it. I've only heard the sound. Um, into the window or the door if he sees him sitting out there. So we can't, like, our door, we have a door to our front porch from our room. And it had a screen on it, like it was a normal door and a screen door. Uh, we used to leave that open sometimes just to get some more airflow in here. And it was a little bit warm, but not hot enough for the AC. Well, we can't do that any longer because, um, inside cat that doesn't like outside cat being around has started sling slamming himself into the screen door and we're like no no that's not what this is for so to make sure he doesn't accidentally get out we have to uh, keep that door closed now and the other cat knows he's pissing off the one inside because he will literally lay in front of our front our front screen door and start taking a bath on the the doormat right up against the door the entire time the other cat inside is losing his mind and um just clawing at the door non-stop And I'm like, bro, stop scratching at the door. You're going to break my door. That's very thin panes of glass that are in that door. So it's an older one. It's definitely not insulated glass, that I can tell you. And uh, just stop. I would watch him on the security camera on the front porch, just stretching out. I'm like, what is this cat getting so weird about? Or I'll hear a weird noise. We had a possum for a while that was stopping by and helping themselves to the bowl of cat food that we had out there. So we had to tell my mom, it's like, don't fill that bowl up before you go to bed if he's not there to, to eat at that moment. because. Now we're feeding the possum, and I'd rather the possum eat the bugs out of the yard 
than fill up on cat food, honestly. But uh, then we had a mischievous trio of raccoons for a brief amount of time that were causing chaos out there. They stopped showing up, so I don't know if they just found someplace better or if they just were passing through the area. I think I only saw the three of them together once. And then it seemed to be just two. And then for a while it was just one. So I don't know if they just decided to go their separate ways. Or if something happened. So they were like Larry, Moe, and Curly the one day we caught them on the camera. Like the one was like looking or being a lookout. It was just so comical. Quick hike in the area, free furry. Okay. Oh, excuse me. This is what the backside of everything is looking like at the moment. Quite a mess of colors in there. Alright, so that's not too bad. That section's a little long. I don't quite want that much. I'm gonna flip this over on itself. Lay this guy in here, just kind of at the base of this little mini shrub. Now sometimes I'll have my finger kind of hanging out on the, the little tail ends on the end that we're not currently stabbing just because if I don't it starts pulling in all of the fiber that I plan on stretching out further in towards where we're stabbing a lot sooner than I wanted it to. What's we looking like here? This just helps it lay a little bit flatter, I have found. A lot of people, when they do this, some people don't use this middle piece. They'll just use a really thick sheet of their background color. And they'll just keep flipping it back and forth and stabbing through each side to tighten it up. I guess, in a way, it kind of makes like our gray piece as their base, but it's already their background color and then they'll add on to it from there. All right, I don't really think I want any more in there, at least not right now, in the background. So let me we'll close up our bag of buttercup for the moment. And our bag of lime. Just A, to keep the fibers from going everywhere. And B, so I know we're not currently working with it at the moment. Now, I know his has got a lot more things flipping and flicking and filled in there. However, I don't want to overkill with this method. I mean, we could easily keep adding shrubbery and lose our entire grassy background. And maybe in my section, my little corner of the world where this pathway is, it's not that robustly filled in. You know? So, let's go ahead and we're going to advance our tutorial here for just a minute. And we'll watch him put that... Uh, green back in. And 
Now we're gonna add a couple of shades of green in there. We're gonna go with our hunter green as our dark base. And then I've got a little bit of varsity green, which is kind of like a brighter grass green, but still kind of dark. We might mix a little bit of that in there too. Okay, so he's got that dark green base in there in the background, and that's kind of going to go in this pen-lined area that I kind of pulled out here. Oh, 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 what are we doing? He's got the knife. Oh, okay, he's going to start to lay in the area for the bridge and kind of working out where he wants the bridge roof line to be. He has to be careful scraping this paint out because you're looking through the bridge, so you don't want to kill all of that paint sitting there. So that's kind of what he's doing. He's giving himself some parameters to work with. Now he took that out. <laughs> he kind of fucked up there if you look at it because that side came down a lot further than he had originally penciled. Or scraped in. I don't know if he's quite realized it yet. I wonder if it was like that in the finished one and I just didn't notice. It might have been. Oh, it's an ad. Oh no. Why? Get your Sunday Santa Cruz off my stream. Especially if I'm not going to get anything out of that one. I think he comes back in and evens it up. I don't remember not being off height like that. On that side. I mean, it could be an angle thing, and maybe his reference, it was like that. It's not off by a huge amount. It could have been the angle that the photo was taken, because he's kind of ignoring evening that up at the moment. So I'm not really sure. Okay, and then he's just going to town with that palette knife. I mean, that looks like my standard crookedness, so... Okay. So he put that in. Oh, then he's gonna go back and highlight it. Alright, well we don't need to see the highlight just yet. That's fine. So in this section, we're gonna make our green a bit thicker here. Right, so I'm gonna kind of bring this up to here, and I'm okay if we um, lose a little bit of our green to the edge of the pathway and the edge of the bridge. That's fine. I'd rather have it filled in instead of any gray areas um, squeaking through there where they shouldn't be. Oh, 
in a bit in here. So what, it's been like an hour and a half. Do I need to take him? Okay. It's kind of nice out and I think Momo's bored. He doesn't really like to play that much though. He has like short bursts of energy. So his pupper enrichment is going out and hanging out outside for a minute. We can't leave him outside unattended though. We've got some large hawks and Momo's a small guy. It's probably about 15, 20 pounds, if that. And we don't really have a fenced in yard. If I had a secured front porch, I would think about it. It would have to be super, super secure. Like, we'd have to do chicken wire instead of screen. Or we might have to do screen with chicken wire because the cats. Because Momo wouldn't want to be outside by himself for a long. He'd want to come back in. He would get upset about us not being right there with him. Okay. So this section shouldn't take too terribly long to put in. At least I don't think it will. this into here. I'm trying to stay on the line that I drew. Easier said than done. For me. I think I traced around the piece of glass from that 8x10 frame maybe, or maybe it was the backing that fit in the frame. We're going to do this one with um, dowels. We're going to do a scroll display like we did with the other one. Because I bought a few extra dowels. And it works, but I have to hand saw the edges off a little bit, although I might not need to on this one. The portrait orientation, I did. I don't think for this landscape orientation I will need to. sure that all of our little fibery guys are attached here. Alright, so this middle section in here is getting a little bit stiffer from uh, all the layers that we've worked into there. Just twirl in that little tail there. Around the edge, I keep coming to towards the edge of the pad. Remember, I don't need to do that. Sometimes I gotta keep reminding myself of that. 
So this second line in here was originally, um, I was originally going to bring all of the grass down to there and I was like, no, you know what, I think that dark green section is going to be a little bit thicker than I originally um, penciled in room for. I just I just used like regular ballpoint pen to uh, line that out in there. That's fine. It's all good. So, what is everybody's favorite? thing to do in your spare time. Are y'all crafty? What's your favorite craft thingy to work on? Favorite medium to work with? Do you paint, floral arrange? make hair bows or hair accessories, jewelry, clothing, graphic designs, what do you guys do? gray poking through there. So I just wanted to fill that in. As best as we can. I'm gonna have to definitely refluff or not refluff, but fluff some more yarn here when we're done this project we've gone through not a fair amount but a fair amount of what I had fluffed of this dark green now this is the big twist value acrylic yarn from Joann's this is their house brand this dark green Um, I would have liked to have gotten a dark green with paint box, but I, th I didn't see one for some reason. There was like a grass green, I didn't see like a dark hunter green, and I don't know if they just were out of it or something. They were out of a fair number of colors when I was getting together my quish- my- my quish- my- my Christmas- I can't speak today. Wow. Well, Christmas is not pronounced with a Q. Christmas. Um, Jesus Christ, brain. Stop it. Um, when I was putting together my Christmas resupply list of fluff. Oh, I'm almost back. husband didn't come back in with him. So he must be doing something outside. He's either remembered he needed to water or something needed his attention out there. Cat maybe. Outside cat.
Okay, I know it seems like I go over the same spot. It seems like unnecessary amount of times, but it can be a little difficult to tell if you've gotten all of the fiber attached. And sometimes it does take a little bit of sitting there. and tapping it in a little bit extra or what might seem like a little bit extra to ensure that because there's other times where I'm like oh yeah we've been tapping this for like a minute now we're good and then I'll run my hand back over it and nope 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 I'll have loose guys loose little flyaways that are being a bit stubborn about um, connecting. Give me one second here. Alright, I'm fighting. I've been fighting this headache. It's like 8.30. And I still have to make my mom dinner, so. I had to take something to just kinda try to keep that in check somewhat. I think it's trying to figure out if it wants to go full migraine yet or not. So if we have to cancel tomorrow's stream, it's because it went full migraine. I'm not planning on canceling tomorrow's stream yet, but... You alright? Mm -hmm. What was that about? I had a visitor. Oh. Again? Yeah. Well, he, he now seems to sleep uh, out by the shed in all the, in all the grass and whatnot. And ticks and everything? Yeah, well, there's ticks everywhere out there. At least he's hanging out there and not in the poison ivy, so. I would put a flea collar on him, but him being outside, I don't want him to get hung up on something. He's come by recently with quite a few battle tags on him where it looks like there was some fights over territory so I don't want to do that and possibly make it worse I mean I know they make the breakaway ones but I don't fully trust them on an outdoor cat I don't think he would even let us put it on him to begin with we did manage to get him to hold still long enough for us to put the, the drops on him once. But we don't quite have the disposable income to do that consistently. And I don't know if somebody else has taken him in yet and lets him come and go as he pleases because um, he'll just be missing for like a full day, day and a half where we don't see him, and then he shows back up. So I don't want to like double medicate him because that's not good either. seen any ticks on him though. I haven't really been looking but I haven't come across any recently. So that could mean we just don't have any where he's been at the moment. They've fallen off or somebody else put something on him.
because I don't know where all he hangs out. We tried asking on one of the Facebook chats in the that a lot of the townspeople are on if he belonged to anybody, and at that time, um, nobody said anything. So, so we didn't know if we needed to try to trap him or say, "Hey, your cat's at our house. Come get him." Because we seem to be the the loose animal, stray animal pit stop. Where they all seem to come to hang out. One of our indoor cats we originally found outside. Um, it was our night that we put our trash out and uh, it was bitterly cold in December and we found her curled up in the trash bags at the curb. Uh, we ended up getting her to come inside and the next morning we called animal control and they came and picked her up, took her to the town shelter. It's a no-kill shelter in this town. And um, we saw them post on Facebook, hey, is this your cat? It's picked up this morning in the general area and nobody claimed her. And she didn't look like she was an outdoor cat. She was too, um, too people acclimate, acclimated. Like, she wasn't scared of me. Not really. She seemed like she had been somebody's pet, or at least, you know, an indoor the floor animal. Okay. So these lines that I drew down in the pen, they're just kind of suggested guidelines to give me an idea of Hey, don't go past this point, because sometimes we get carried away, and then I get to the bottom and I'm trying to squeeze stuff in because I didn't leave myself enough room. So I started trying to roughly pen out placements for different, um, at least land sections. So the, the dirt for the like the bridge is gonna like come out a little bit here and then we'll fill that in there, so it's okay. We're gonna lose a little bit of this dark. Not much. But that's kinda by design here. That's why I didn't pencil the width of the bridge in. Because we want to be able to look through and see stuff behind it. I do need to add a little bit more dark in here because we've got a section forming where we have a split between the two shades and that's not what I want. It's formed a fence line there. And while this is going to be a darker section and I can probably fix it you know, maybe I'll let that go for right now. Because I want to take some of this dark, right? I want to flick some of it up into here, overlapping. That Did Momo get his goodie? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's definitely turning into something on the back side. Kind of impressionistic a little bit on the back, I think. But. I don't know. 
I say I'm gonna leave it alone, and then I'm looking at it, and it's not that obvious on the camera, but it is sitting like right in there. But if I don't deal with it now, it will bug the ever loving shit out of me. needs to be a bit more polished than like this section when we were putting the green in up there because yeah we've got a little bit of our other dark green but plan is not to have that much of that other dark green in here, just a little kiss of it here and there. Right, what time is it? Okay, so it's just getting to be on 4 o'clock. So we're going to be pausing here in just a minute. So I do have hard stop time these days. Well, I did get started a little bit later today, so I do apologize. Hopefully this migraine headache, whatever it wants to be, backs the fuck off tonight. And um, we'll be able to get going a little bit sooner tomorrow. But we, we made a little bit of progress. We finished up our, our golden dying grass color, I guess we'll call it up into here and we got some shrubbery put in. I didn't want to go too crazy on the shrubs. I wanted it to be more of like a not necessarily a closed in wooden section but maybe like a spread out field a little bit in there with some, some shrubbies around it and then like coming out of like a wooded area. So this is going to be like a heavily canopied section maybe over a little like retain a retention ditch or something and um, you know this pathway is a little bit more windy, and um, I probably could have made that a little bit more windy, but you know, it is what it is at this point, so I can't really go back and fix that at the moment. Let's see. Anybody I am comfortable taking you guys doing anything? I don't think so. Let me double check one other screen. Um, oh wait. Oh. Taco. We'll go see Taco. Let me bring up Taco stream. Yes. We will go and see the Taco. Taco is a friend of mine I made through World of Warcraft and the lot challenging things when I used to do that. So we'll go try to see Taco and um, she's celebrating her birthday tomorrow so we should go and, and do that and um, yeah so I will try to see you guys tomorrow hopefully I'll be feeling a little bit better. Um, and we'll continue putting in our green stuff here. So until next time, you guys, thanks for the raid. Thanks for following all the places below. And have a good one.